Hello and welcome to 5 Minute Physics. This video is about changes in momentum, specifically looking at collisions. Let's get started. Momentum is a funny quantity. It's the product of mass and velocity. And if you're going to write it as a shorter equation, we use P for momentum. Don't ask why. Latin. Now, if you've done kinetic energy, um, you might be thinking, why is momentum any better? because that involves mass and velocity as well. Well, unlike energy, momentum is a vector quantity, which hopefully you know means it has a direction as well as a size. And just like energy, momentum is always conserved. That means if you have a certain amount of momentum in a system before something happens, you'll have the same amount of momentum after that event, provided there's no external forces acting. We'll think more about that in a second. Now these two properties make momentum really, really useful. It's used by, for example, crash investigators all over the world to work out what happened in car accidents. Let's look at an example of that. So here we have a Porsche Boxster. Its mass is 1,500 kilograms. In a moment, it's gonna be moving at 10 meters a second to the right. Gotta have a direction because that's the velocity. And therefore its momentum is 1,500 kilograms times 10 meters a second. 15,000 kilogram meters per second to the right. Remember, vector quantity. So there we're gonna represent that with an arrow. Unfortunately, further down the road, unknown to our Porsche driver, is sitting stationary a cement mixer. And that cement mixer has a mass of 10,000 kilograms, 10 tons, and it's not moving, zero meters per second, which means its momentum is therefore gonna be zero kilogram meters per second. Obviously, we don't need to give a direction for that because it's not moving at all. So, before anything happens, we have a total momentum of 15,000 kilogram meters per second to the right. And that's made up of the momentum of the Porsche, 15,000, plus the momentum of the cement mixer, zero. So here comes a Porsche, lovely sunny day, down they go, bar barreling down the road, checking Facebook on their phone, picking their nose, who knows, slap bang into the back of the cement mixer. Bit of a mess, they're not very happy. Now, before that crash, the total momentum was 15,000 kilogram meters per second to the right, okay? which means afterwards, the total momentum will still have to be 15,000 kilogram meters per second to the right. And that's going to be true in every single collision question you ever get asked. Okay? Total momentum before equals total momentum afterwards. So we now need to work out how fast they're going to be moving after the crash. We both know really that they're going to be moving forward slowly, a lot slower than the Porsche was going, but exactly how fast that's going to be. Well, to work that out, we need to use the same equation again, the momentum equals mass times velocity equation. But now, because we're trying to work out their combined velocity after the crash, we need to use their combined mass. So imagine the Porsche and the cement mixer have smashed together. They've sort of made one vehicle. Let's call it a Porsche mixer. Okay, and it's made up of the Porsche giving 1,500 kilograms and the cement mixer giving 10,000 kilograms. So there's a total mass of 11,500 kilograms. Now, we need to work out the velocity. And if we rearrange the momentum equation, well, velocity is just momentum divided by mass. So if we pop some numbers into that, we have 15,000 kilogram meters per second divided by 11,500 kilograms gives us 1.30 meters per second to the right. That's just three significant figures. Now notice I've put to the right there because our momentum before was to the right. So the velocity afterwards is going to be to the right as well. So off they go. Now that is your basic process for tackling the kind of collision questions you're likely to be asked at GCSE. Obviously it can get more complicated, but this is the kind of level that you are looking at really. Earlier on we said that momentum was conserved provided no external forces act. Now in any example you get, you're very unlikely to have to consider external forces. But imagine, for example, that this, uh, this cement mixer had its handbrake on. When the Porsche hits it, they're both still gonna move to the right, but they're not going to move as fast as we've calculated because there would be an extra force from the handbrake slowing them both down. So to summarize, momentum is a vector product. That's what makes it more useful than kinetic energy in circumstances like this. You get it by multiplying mass and velocity. The total momentum of the system is the same before and after any event. We've thought about collisions. I'll do another video thinking about explosions. The same principles hold true, provided that there are no external forces acting. Thank you so much for watching this five minute physics video. I really hope it's been useful. If it has, please like, please subscribe and tell your friends about us. Bye for now.